Welcome. In this lesson, Chapter 9, we're going to learn how to use the brush, the color picker, eyedropper, and the paint bucket. So let's go ahead and select this image, right click and choose Photoshop Elements Editor, which will open it up in the editor. And make sure your project bin is collapsed. If it isn't, just double click on Project Bin. Make sure your Layers panel is open. If it isn't, choose Windows, Layers. And if you happen to have the rulers open from the last lesson, just go ahead and choose View, Rulers, and this will hide it. See? Okay. Now on the Layers panel, we have three layers. One is the original, which is our goal. The other one's an outline, and the third one is Layer 1. Layer 1 will use to paint some brush strokes, and the outline will learn how to use it with the paint bucket. So go ahead and select Layer 1. Go ahead and select the brush tool, which is a shortcut B, and these options will change to reflect that tool. Now what are these options? Well here you can choose between what type of brushes. We'll choose default brushes, but you have a choice between calligraphy, natural, and all these others. Okay. You have an option between a hard brush or a soft edge brush. Soft edge brush is a little hazy, and um, the um, hard brush is more defined. Okay. You also have a flyout panel which can show you like if you want a larger thumbnail of the brush or only text. You can also load brushes and even save brushes or even rename brushes. Okay. Next to it is the size of the brush. So right now it's at a 19 pixels. And then next to that is the mode, which I'll talk about in another lesson. These are blending modes that you can use. And then there's opacity. Opacity starts from 0 to 100. 0 is invisible and 100 is full on. So you can see the stroke at 100%. Next to that is an airbrush function, which you can use the airbrush um, with the brush stroke, which is nice. So let's go ahead and paint the leg. So let's zoom into the area of the iPod kit here, and we'll zoom in right here. And we'll select the paintbrush tool, and we'll paint the leg here. So we have it at 19 pixels, and we start painting. And it looks nice, but it seems like it's a little thin. So what can we do? Let's click Undo, and let's increase the size of the brush stroke. We'll let's say about uh, maybe 47. Oh, it looks about right. Okay. And now let's paint the the leg. Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay. Maybe it's too thick. Is there another way that I can increase the brush size without going back and forth? If you click the left bracket key, that will decrease the size of the brush stroke, as you can see here. If you press the right bracket key, you can increase the size of the brush stroke, as you can see here. So go ahead and click on do to erase those. Let me decrease it to a size that looks more manageable. And now let me paint the leg in. Perfect. Now, what if I didn't like the brush strokes? Is there another tool that I can use? Well, Adobe has provided that, so go ahead and click Undo, and there's the Pencil tool, which is located under the Brush tool. Shortcut in, and it has the same options as the brush. And we'll go ahead and draw the other leg in here. Okay, perfect. Now we have another part that's missing, so I'm going to press the space bar to move over the iPod Kid to I see just the iPod. And we're going to um, paint or um, draw in the window for this iPod here. Okay, perfect. And then we're going to draw the circle that we're all used to seeing. And then the smaller circle. Now this may be drawn on the outline layer. That's okay, don't worry about it. And let's go ahead and fit and view. And so far we have this, great. So let's start um, painting with a different color. Um, the the hair here. So let's zoom into the hair area. This right here, this will set the foreground color for which the brush or the pencil tool will use to draw. This is the background. If you wanted to switch these, you could click the double arrow here. This will switch them back and forth. There is another shortcut. You can press X on the keyboard. As you can see, every time I press X, it switches back and forth. If you select the pencil tool, and let's say you press X, or let's say you had different colors, you can always press D. If you press D, that will set it back to the default black or round white um, background color. But as we noticed that the color for you know to outline the hair here is not black, it's more of an orange. So how do we get this color? Well, you can double click on the foreground color and choose a color. So we can move this up and down to see which color we want. 
or we can change it to saturation only, brightness, or RGBs. So let's go back to hue. And we can also see how it's within this color picker. If I drag out, we can sample a color here. And then it will tell us the color that's been sampled. Okay, it gives us even the hexa, hexa number here, the RGB number, so if you want to write these down. And then click OK. Let's select the paintbrush tool again. Um, press B if you want. And let's just draw a little um, outside the hair here. Okay, actually click undo. Click on layer one. And now let's draw it. Okay. And let's draw here. Okay. Okay, that looks nice. Let's compare the original. Okay, maybe a little bit larger. That's no problem. And it also was under the black, so how do we switch that? You can drag layer one under the outline, and it goes under it just like that. That's something else I'll explain in a later tutorial, but I wanted to show you right now. Now let's move this, let's fit in view, so we double click on the hand. Now that we have our layer one here, let's go ahead and paint this shirt the same color as this. We have the color chosen already, but if we hit D for default, oh, excuse me, i got to select the brush tool first. Select D for default, you see that it's black. So we open the color picker, drag and select the color, click OK. Now this is two, can you imagine, look how small this brush size is. This will take all day to paint this. So we can choose a size here or press the right bracket key and increase the brush size. Okay, and now we can paint it like this. Doesn't matter if you go outside, it's perfect. There we go, perfect. Now let's talk about another tool. Let's click on, a re let's hide layer one by clicking on the eyeball. Click on the original eyeball to open it up. Go over here to this tool. It's called the eyedropper tool. Shortcut is I. Makes sense, right? I, eyedropper. And, and then up here you have sample size, point sample, which is individual pixel, or 3x3 three three and a 5x5. Five five. I'd rather have it set on 3x3 three three because this gives me an average of 3 pixels, 3 pixels uh, across 3 pixels down, so it's an average of 9 pixels total. And then you can move this within your the photo here, and it will sample a color wherever you click. So we're going to select this blue. I'm going to turn off the original layer here, turn back on the layer 1, and now we're going to select the brush tool again. Okay, now we're going to paint in the shorts. I'm actually going to decrease the size of my brush by um, clicking on the left bracket key. Painting in. Okay. There we go. A little bit of white is left. That's okay. Let's just go ahead and use that same color, the blue, and we'll paint the, uh, the feet here. Perfect. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and paint the face. Remember, we're going to turn on the original. Select the eyedropper. Sample. Paintbrush, turn off the original, and we'll just paint. There you go, perfect. Nice. Okay. And paint the ears, fine. And then paint this little hand here. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to select the original, turn it on, select the eyedropper tool. Select this color, okay, turn off the original, and now we're going to use a different tool this time. Make sure you select Outline, and choose the Paint Bucket tool. Now the Paint Bucket tool, if you move the Paint Bucket tool in right in the iPod and click once, it'll paint this whole area that's enclosed, and nothing else is open, and it's contiguous. So it'll only paint um, as far as it can reach and not extend past the borders. So see, it doesn't paint in here because this is already this is closed, and this is closed. But it paints everywhere here because it's open. It didn't paint out here because we only checked contiguous. So if I were to undo this and uncheck contiguous and do this again, it paints everything purple that isn't painted already. Okay, so undo, 
contiguous. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Oh, see, I'm glad this happened. This is a perfect beginner's mistake, and it always happens. And the reason this happened is because I'm on layer one. So undo, select the outline layer, then, there we go. And now let's paint the inside of the iPod. So we're going to select the original again, and we'll just choose this color and use it for both. Click on original, use the paint bucket tool, and bam, bam. Then the eyedropper will sample this blue, then use the paint bucket, and we'll paint in the middle here. So now we have our iPod kit done. And something else I want to talk about with the paint bucket tool, you have a choice of anti-alias or not. Make sure you have this checked. If it's not, it can, it can seem a little jaggedy when it paints it instead of a smooth look. And we also can use a pattern. So if you were to check this, it opens up this um, function here and you can choose different patterns to paint. So if I were to choose this canvas color looking thing. So we have our pattern selected. Let's this time make sure that all layers is checked. And when we click on it, watch what happens. It sees all the layers that have been painted on and it doesn't paint over those. But on, it only, and it's contiguous, so it only paints in the areas that have not been already defined. So if I were to undo again, and then choose and uncheck contiguous. Now it paints everything that hasn't been painted already in all the layers. Nice. Now the last thing to do is, of course, save our masterful painting that we've created and you go to File, Save As, and here we have a couple options. Include an Elements Organizer? Yes. Save in a version set with Original? Yes. Save the layers, of course, so you can always go back and modify them. Save the color profile. Because we said include an elements organizer, no, excuse me, because we said save in a version set, it added the word edited to um, the, um, the file, which is fine. You see, if I uncheck it, you don't see it, but if I check it, you see it. So that way you know which one was the original, which one is the edited version. Let me click save, but I'm not, and that's it.